Hello guys, I'm going to start a new series today. This is a Kane Silas trailer. It's uh, made by Britons. Um, we're just going to convert this so that we can uh, use it with the uh, radio control tractors. So basically all that's going to be in it is a mechanism to tip the trailer and some LEDs for lights. So should be fairly straightforward. The build quality of the trailer is, is reasonable. Uh, it's let down quite a bit by this rear axle which is supposed to be a steering axle but as you can see there there's a huge amount of play in the wheels they bend in and out so it probably would have been a little bit better if there was a solid rear axle on it I guess but if we had our own bolts to the steering mechanism we might be able to tighten that up a bit or maybe we just won't worry about it I'll, I'll see as I get on there's a nice spring mechanism on the front here so you can see that's quite a nice little feature. For some reason there's a huge amount of play in this uh, fake cylinder that they have here. I'm not sure why that is. But other than that, it's a pretty good model. The body of the model is pretty good. I think it's all plastic, uh, which makes it pretty light, so it should be easy enough to tip. And we have a die cast chassis. I'm assuming that the load that's going to be inside this trailer is always going to be that little fine uh, fake silage stuff that you can get from I think it's Brushwood Toys or some of those companies uh, so I don't expect the trailer to have to lift very much so because the loads are going to be so low I think I'll get away with putting an N20 motor around about where this uh, fake cylinder is so I'll get rid of the fake cylinder put the N20 motor with the screw drive in around about here then uh, connect that up to the trailer now we don't have a huge length on the screw here to actually move very much but because the load is so small, I think we'll be able to get away with a uh, small leverage on the inside of the model here. Because this, none of this is die cast, so it's very light. So I reckon if we put uh, a little arm back here somewhere, we might just about be able to get it to, to lift up. Uh, there's only one way to find out, obviously, and that's to try it out. If that doesn't work, we can always just uh, make up our own screwdriver. And, you know, there's a lot of room under this trailer. So we can make a long screwdrive, get more leverage by pivoting maybe up here where it's connected here. And then we might be able to lift the trailer that way. But for starters, I'm going to try the short uh, screwdrive and see can I lift the trailer that way. So the first thing to do is to take the trailer apart so that we can see what we're actually working with here. hoping that would let the trailer flip up completely but it doesn't look like it can you know we're hitting the back there so there's a limit to how high this can go I'm not able to get the access to the chassis that I'm going to need to take out the screws on the wheels so I'm going to have to remove this uh, pin that's the rear or that the body of the trailer pivots around so we need to get rid of that and then Hopefully then we'll get enough access to add our motor. There's the pin out without much trouble. Now we have good access to the chassis here. We can just screw it all apart. So it's only this piece that actually comes up off the off the model. Since this plastic piece for the fake cylinder is removable I'm thinking maybe I can print an enclosure for the N20 motor here that I can fit into these these guide holes and these screw holes so that I'd just be replacing it directly with the N20 motor mount if I can print something like that I should end up with a fairly strong mounting point for the N20 motor and if that is the case then we should be fairly quickly able to get our trailer up and running and then it's just a matter of connecting the screw to the uh, upper part of the trailer which uh, shouldn't be too difficult I'm set up to do a test print here so I'm going to print a 2mm plate the thickness of this and it's going to have all these holes in it and then when I have that printed I'm going to make sure that the printed holes align up with these little pins and screw holes properly and then 
if I'm sure that this plate is right then I'll print the rest of the piece because it should print this 2mm plate pretty quickly but to print the entire piece will probably take quite a while Here's the piece I just printed and you probably noticed during the print this uh, edge of the print wasn't sticking to the table and uh, it looks like this edge didn't particularly stick too well either. Uh, this other side has come out okay though and you can see those little grooves there are supposed to line up here and they actually come out pretty close. I think this side of the print might have got too hot because it looks to have uh, shrunk a bit and um, on this side though the holes seem to line up pretty good but they're maybe a little bit too a little bit too small so what I think I'll do is widen the holes in the model and uh, give it a, another go and see how it goes on. I'm gonna make another few attempts at making this uh, I won't show you the print but I'll show you the final product when I get a good one Okay guys, I've tried a couple of different methods to print this uh, part for this and uh, I'm beginning to get them around about the right sizes. Now this isn't uh, going to be the final version but uh, this is just another prototype. But I've run out of time this weekend so I'm going to uh, mount this one and test it out. But basically what I've done here is, this is the two mounting points where the fake cylinder used to connect to the trailer. So I've made that T-section for there and I have this motor is going to mount into the old mounting points here just for the other end of the uh, other end of the fake cylinder so that basically pushes in there this goes up through the hole here and mounts onto this part and as the motor pushes this we're going to have the pivot point here and a pivot point here so we basically have a triangle between here this connection here and the motor so as we force this by screwing out the motor this direction our triangle is going to move like this and that's going to tip our trailer or at least that's the plan so what I'm going to do now is uh, mount this all to the trailer and see if it's actually going to work okay I've fitted everything into the trailer now uh, the important thing probably to remember is that this isn't really the final design so it's missing a few strengthening pieces and it might not be actually strong enough to um, to lift any load but this is more the proof of concept idea and as you can see so far so good we seem to be able to raise the trailer and if I can wire the motor the other way we should be able to lower it So there you go, um, it's not 100% perfect, there's a couple of dimensions I need to perfect yet. See it's not fully uh, lowering it and it's not fully raising it. So I need to sort all those minor issues out. But but the main idea is working. The, the mechanism seems to work, the screw drive and an important thing to remember here is that I haven't actually modified anything I'm using all the original mounting points and we're having absolutely no problem 
uh, getting what we need without modifying the trailer. So I think with another little bit of work I'll be able to perfect this screwdriver and I should be able to make myself a few silage trailers. There's a grain trailer version of this, should be able to make that. So basically if I want another few silage trailers or grain trailers, all I'd have to do is buy the trailer, print these parts, mount the motor, wire it up and that's all there is to it really. It should be fairly simple to add to my fleet pretty quickly now that I can uh, 3D print these things. Now obviously these designs like I say aren't perfected yet so I need a little bit more work on that but it does seem to be working good so far. So that's all I have time for this weekend. If you have any comments or suggestions post them below or head over to the forum and post them there and I'll do my best to answer them if I can. And uh, if you want to see the rest of this build, make sure and subscribe. Uh, this should be up, it'll probably be a couple of weeks before I get round to uh, working on this again. But I'd say this build will only take two or three more uh, videos to finish it off because um, I'm probably making more progress with the 3D printed parts than I normally would because when I don't get the hole lined up perfectly, all I do is adjust the hole slightly on the computer, hit print, go away, come back, and the part is there printed with the new dimensions, if they don't work, just modify them again. Normally if I was trying to do this myself, like drill all these parts and make all these parts, if I made a mistake, it would take a lot of time for me to remake all the bits by hand so that they would uh, work properly. And also getting dimensions, for example, to for me to try and make these two pieces identical would probably probably wouldn't work out all that good. With the 3D printer I'm able to create lots of different versions of the of the different parts and get them perfect before I move on to the next part. So if you liked that video make sure and hit the like button and uh, that's pretty much everything for this week so thanks very much for watching.